Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Palo Alto for theCUBE. Special two-day coverage here in Palo Alto. We have reporters and we have analysts on the ground in San Francisco, um, analyzing what's going on with Google Next. We have all the great action. Of course, we also have reporters at Open Compute Summit, which is also happening in San Jose, and Intel's at both places. And we have uh, Intel senior manager on the line here, on the phone, Lisa uh, Spellman, the vice president and general manager of the Xeon product line, product management responsibility, as well as marketing across the data center. Um, Lisa, welcome to theCUBE coverage, and thanks for calling in and, and uh, dissecting Google Next, as well as teasing out maybe a little bit OCP around the Xeon processor. Thanks for yeah. calling. Well, thank you for having me, and it's hard to be in many places at once, so it's a busy week and we're all over, so that's, uh, you know, we'll do this on the phone and next time we'll do it in person. Love to. Um, well, more big news is obviously Intel has a big presence it, with the Google Next, and tomorrow there's going to be some activity uh, with some of the big, big name uh, executives at Google talking about um, your relationship with Google, AKA Alphabet. What are some of the key things that you guys are doing with Google that people should know about? Because this is a very turbulent time in, in the ecosystem of the tech business. You saw Mobile World Congress last week. We've seen the evolution of 5G. We have network transformation going on. Data centers are moving to a hybrid cloud. In some cases, cloud native is exploding. So all a new kind of computing environment is taking shape. Yeah. What is Intel doing here at Google Next that's uh, a proof point to the trajectory of the business. Yeah, you know, I, I like to think it's not too much of a surprise that we're um, there uh, arm in arm with uh, Google, given all of um, the work that we've done together over the last uh, several years and the tight um, engineering and technical partnership that we have. Uh, one of the big things that we've been working with uh, Google on is as they move from delivering cloud services for their own usage and for their own applications that they provide out to others, but now as they transition into being a cloud service provider for uh, enterprises and other IT shops as well. So they've uh, recently launched their Google Cloud platform. They just, in the last uh, week or so, um, did a nice announcement about the partnership that we have together and how the Google Cloud platform is now um, available and running and open for business on our latest next generation Intel Xeon uh, product. And that's codenamed Skylake, but that's something that we've been working on with them with since the inception of the design of the product. So it's really nice uh, to have it out there and in the market and available for customers. And we very much value partnerships like the one we have with Google where we have that deep technical engagement to really get to the heart of the workloads that they need to provide and then can design um, product and solutions around that. Yeah. So you don't just look at it as a um, one-off project or a one-time investment. It's an ongoing continuation and evolution of new products, new features, new capabilities yeah. to continue to improve their total cost of ownership and their customer experience. Well, Lisa, this is your baby, the Xeon uh, code name Skylake, which is love that name. Intel always has great code names, by the way. We love love that. But it's real technology. Can you share some specific uh, features of what's different around these new workloads? Because you know we've been teasing out over the past day, and we're going to be talking tomorrow as well about these new use cases. Because you're looking at a, a, a plethora of, of use cases from IoT Edge all the way down into cloud native applications. What specific things did is Xeon doing that's next generation that you could highlight that that points to this new cloud operating system, the cloud service providers, whether it's managed services to full-blown, down and dirty cloud? So, uh, it is my baby. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> and it's, uh, that's why it's so exciting to see it uh, out there and um, starting to get uh, used and picked up and be uh, unleashing it on, on the world. So, um, with this next generation of Xeon, it's always about the processor, but what we've done has gone so much beyond that. So we have a ton of what we call platform level innovation that is coming in. We really see this as one of our biggest kind of step function improvements in the last 10 years that we've offered. Some of the features that we've already talked about are things like AVX 512 instructions, which I know just sounds fun and rolls off the tongue, but really it's very specific workload acceleration for things like high-performance computing workloads. And high-performance computing is something that we see more and more 
getting used and accessed in cloud-style infrastructure. So it's this perfect marrying of that workload specifically, driving benefit from the new platforms and seeing um, you know really strong performance improvements. It also speaks to the way with Intel and Xeon families, because remember Xeon, we have Xeon Phi, you've got standard Xeon, you've got Xeon D. You can use these instructions across those families and have uh, workloads that can move to the most optimized hardware for whatever you're trying to drive. Um, some of the other things that we've talked about and announced is we'll have our next generation of Intel Resource Director technology, which really helps you um, manage and provide quality of service within your applications, which is very important to cloud service providers, um, mm -hmm. giving them control over hardware and software assets so that they can deliver the best uh, customer experience, their end customers, based on the service level agreement they've signed up for. And then the other one is Intel OmniTask architecture. So again, uh, it's a uh, fairly high performance computing focused product. Uh, OmniPath is a fabric and we're going to offer that in an integrated fashion with Skylake so that you can get even higher levels of performance and capability. So we're looking forward to a lot more that we have to come. The um, whole of the product line will continue to roll out in the middle of this year, um, but we're excited to be able to offer an early version to uh, the cloud service providers, get them started, get it out in the market, and then do that full-scale enterprise validation over the next awesome. several months. So i got to ask you the question, because this is something that's coming up. We're seeing a transition. Obviously, the digital transformation has been talked about for a while. Network transformation, IOTs all around the corner. Yep. Uh, we got uh, autonomous vehicles, smart cities, uh, on and on. But i got to ask you, though, the cloud service providers seems to be coming out of this show as a key storyline, Google Next, as uh, the, the multi-cloud architectures become very clear. So it's become clear... Uh, it's not just the show, but it's been building up to this. It's pretty clear that it's going to be a multi-cloud world. As well yeah. as you're starting to see the, the providers talk about their SaaS offerings. Google talking about G Suite. Microsoft talks about um, Office 365. Oracle has their apps. IBM's got Watson. So you have this SaaSification. So this now creates a whole other category of what cloud is. If you include yep. SaaS, you're really talking about Salesforce, Adobe, you know, on and on the list. Everyone yep. is potentially going to become a SaaS provider, whether they're unique cloud or partnering with some of the cloud. What does that mean from a, a cloud service provider? What do they need uh, for application support requirements to be successful? So we, when we look at the cloud service provider market um, inside of Intel, we are talking about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So cutting across the three, you know, major categories. I, I do feel like up until now, infrastructure as a service has gotten a lot of the um, airtime or focus, but SaaS is actually the bigger business. And that's why you see, I think, people moving towards it, especially as enterprise IT becomes more comfortable with using SaaS applica applications. You know, maybe first they started with offloading their expense report tool, but over time they've moved into um, more sophisticated offerings that free up resources for them to do their most uh, critical or business critical applications that they require to stay in more of a private cloud. So I think that evolution to uh, multi-cloud and hybrid cloud has happened across the entire industry, whether you are an enterprise uh, or whether you're a cloud service provider. Mm -hmm. And then the move to SaaS is uh, logical because people are demanding just more and more services. One of the things through all our years of partnering with the biggest to the smallest cloud service providers and working so closely on those technical requirements that we've continued to find is that total cost of ownership really is king. It's that performance per dollar TCO that they can uh, provide and derive from their infrastructure. And we focus a lot of our engineering and our investment and our silicon design around providing that. And we have you know, multi-generations that we've you know, provided even in just in the last five years to continue to drive those step function improvements and really optimize our hardware and the code that runs on top of it to make sure that it does continue to deliver on those demanding workloads. And the other thing that we see the providers focusing on is what's their differentiation. So yeah. um, you'll see cloud service providers that will look through the um, various silicon features that we offer and choose. They'll pick and choose based on whatever their key workload is or whatever their key market is. 
and really kind of hone in and optimize for those silicon features so that they can have a differentiated offering into the market about what capabilities and services they'll provide. So it's an area where we yeah. continue to really focus our efforts is uh, understand the workload, drive the TCO down, and then focus in on the design point of what's going to um, give that differentiation and acceleration. It's interesting. The definitions also are probably, I would agree with you, the cloud service provider is a huge market when you look at the SaaS, because whether you're talking about Uber or Netflix, for instance, examples people know about in real life, you can't ignore these new diverse use cases coming out. Like, for instance, I was just talking with uh, uh, Stu Miniman, one of our analysts here at Wikibon, and Riot Games could be considered a cloud, right? I mean, because it's a SaaS platform, yep. it's gaming. So yep. you're starting to see these new um, apps coming out of the woodwork. So you, they, yep. the, that seems to be a requirement for being agile as a cloud provider. How do, the, how do you enable that? I mean, what specifically can you share, if I'm a cloud service provider, to be ready to support anything uh, that's coming down the pike? You know, we do do a lot of um, workload and market uh, analysis inside of uh, Intel and the data center group. And then if you have even seen over the past, you know, five years, again, I'll just stick with the um, near term, how much we've expanded and broadened our product portfolio. So again, a lot of it's still be built upon that foundation of Xeon and what we have there, but we've gone... Uh, to offer a lot of variety. So again, I mentioned Xeon Phi. Mm -hmm. Xeon Phi, up to 72 cores. Bootable Xeon, but specific <laughs> workload acceleration targeted at high-performance computing and other analytics workloads. And then you have things at the other end. Um, you've got Xeon D, which is really focused at more front-end web services and storage and network workloads. Or Atom, which is even um, lower power and more focused on cold and warm storage workloads and again that uh, network function. So you sit there and say <laughs> we're not just sticking with one product line and saying this is the answer for everything. We're saying here's the core of what we offer and the features people need and finding options whether they range from low power to high power or high performance and, and kind of mix across those um, that whole kind of workload spectrum. Yep. And then we've broadened around the CPU into a lot of other silicon innovation. So I don't know if you guys have had a chance to talk about some of the work that we're doing with FPGAs, with our FPGA group, and um, yeah. driving and delivering um, cloud and network acceleration through FPGAs. We've also introduced new products in the last year, like silicon photonics, so going with uh, network traffic across and well, F through. Is FPGA, data that's the Altera stuff, right? We did talk with them. They're doing the, uh, the programmable yep. um, chips. Exactly. So it requires a level of sophistication uh, in understanding what, you know, you need the workload to accelerate. But once you have it, it is um, a very, um, you know, impressive and powerful performance gain for you. So the cloud service providers are a perfect market for that, as are, are the comm service providers, because they have very sophisticated IT and very technically astute engineering teams that are able to really, again, go back to the workload, understand what they need and figure out the right um, software solution to pair with it. So that's been a, a big focus of our targeting. And then, like I said, we've added all these different things, different new products to the platform um, that start to, over time, just work better and better together. So when you have things like Intel SSDs paired together with Intel CPUs and Intel Ethernet and Intel FPGA and Intel Silicon Photonics, you can start to see how the whole package, when it's designed together under one house, can offer a tremendous amount of workload acceleration. I got to ask you a question, Lisa, because this is, comes up. But as you're talking, I'm just in my mind visualizing a new kind of virtual computer server. The world is the cloud is one big server, so it's a, it's a design challenge. And what we what was teased out of Mobile World Congress, that was very clear, was this new end-to-end -end architecture, you know, reimagined. But if you have these uh, processors that have unique capabilities that, that have use case specific capabilities, in a way, you guys are now providing a portfolio of solutions so that it almost can be customized for um, a variety of, of cloud service providers. Am I getting that right? Is that yeah. how you guys see this happening, where you guys can yeah. go to someone and say, hey, just mix and match what you want, and you're good? Well, and, and we try to provide a little bit more guidance than, uh, than as you wish. I mean, of course, people <laughs> have their options to choose, but like with the cloud service providers, for example, we have really tight engineering engagement so that we can, uh, you know, again, understand what they need, what their design point is, what they're honing in on. Like you might work with one cloud service provider that is very facilities limited, and you might work with another one that is um, 
uh, they're space limited. There's another one's power limited, and another one has um, performance is king. So you can we do custom SKUs to help meet each of those needs. Another good example is in the artificial intelligence space, where we did another um, acquisition last year of a company called Nirvana that's working on optimized silicon for neural networks. And so now we have put together this AI portfolio. So instead of saying, oh, here's one answer for artificial intelligence, it's here's a multitude of answers where you've got Xeon. So if you have uh, underutilized capacity and are starting down your artificial intelligence journey, just use your Xeon capacity with an optimized framework and you'll get great results and you can start your journey. If you are monetizing and running your business based on what AI can do for you and you are, you know, leading the pack out there, you've got the best data scientists and algorithm writers and deep learning experts in the world, then you're going to want to use something like the, the silicon that we acquired from the Nirvana team. And that, that code name is Lake Crest, sticking with <laughs> some lakes there. Um, and you'll want to use something like Xeon with Lake Crest to get that ultimate workload um, acceleration. So. We have the whole portfolio that goes from Xeon to Xeon Phi to Xeon with FPGAs or Xeon with Lake Crest to say, depending on what you're doing and, again, what your design point is, we have a solution for you. And, of course, when we say solution, we don't just mean hardware. We mean the optimized software frameworks and the libraries and all of that that actually give you something that can perform. On the competitive side, we've seen the, land, the processor landscape uh, heat up um, on the server and the cloud space. Obviously... Um, whether it's from a competitor or homegrown foundry, whatever, you know, fabs are out yep. there. I mean, so Intel's always had a great partnership with cloud service providers. Vis-a-vis -vis the competition in context to that, what are you guys doing um, specifically and how you'd approach the marketplace in, in light of competition? So um, we do operate in a highly competitive market and we always take all competitors seriously. So far we've seen the press heat up which is different um, than seeing all of the uh, deployments. So what we look for is to continue to offer the highest performance and lowest total cost of ownership for our all our customers, and in this case, you know, the cloud service providers, of course. Um, and what do we do is we kind of stick with our game plan of yeah. putting the best silicon in the world into the market on a regular beat rate and cadence. <laughs> and so there will, there's always news, it's always an interesting story, but when you look at, um, you know, having had eight new products and new generations in market since the last major competitive x86 product, um, that's kind of what we do. Just yeah. keep delivering so that our customers know that they can bet on us to always be there and not have these massive gaps. And then I also talked to you about portfolio expansion, yeah. so we... Didn't, we don't bet on just one horse. We give our customers the choice to optimize for their workloads. So mm -hmm. um, you can go up to 72 cores with Xeon Phi if that's important. You can go as low as two cores with Atom if that's what uh, works for you. So it's just an example of how we try to kind of address yeah. all of our customer segments with the right product at the right time. And IoT certainly brings a challenge, too, when you talk about network yeah. edge. That's a huge, huge uh, growth area. I mean, you can't... You can't deny that that's going to be amazing. You look at a car as a data center these days, right? So, yeah. I mean. A data center on wheels. Data center um, on wheels. Um, so that, that's been one of the fun things about, you know, my role even in the last year is that growing partnership, even inside of Intel with our IoT team and just really going through all of the products that we have in development and how many of them can be um, reused and driven towards IoT solutions. The other thing is, like, if you look at it in the data center space, I genuinely believe we have the world's best ecosystem. Like, you can't find an ISV that we haven't worked with to optimize their software and solution to run best on Intel architecture and get that workload acceleration. And now we have the chance to put that same playbook into play in the IoT space. So it's a growing somewhat nascent but growing market with a ton of opportunity and a ton of standards to still be built and a lot of, like, full solution kits to be put together. And that's kind of what Intel does. We, you know, we don't just throw something out to the market and say, good luck. Yeah. We actually put the ecosystem together around it so that it performs. And I think that's kind of what you see with, um, I don't know if you guys saw our Intel Go announcement, but it's really like the software development kit and the whole like product offering for what you need for truly delivering um, automated vehicles. 
Well, at least I got to say, so you guys are, you know, have a great formula. Why fix what's not broken? Stay with Moore's Law. Keep that cadence going. But what's interesting is you are listening and adapting to the, the architectural shifts, which is um, yeah. smart. So congratulations. And I think, you know, the, as the cloud service provider world changes, and certainly in the data center, um, it's going to be a turbulent time, but a lot of opportunity. And so good to have that reliability. And if you can make the software go faster, then they can write more software faster. <laughs> so. Yep, and that's what we've seen. Every time we deliver a step function improvement in performance, we see a step function improvement in demand. And so the, the world is still hungry for more and more compute. And we see this across all of our customer bases. And every time you make that compute more affordable, they come up with new, innovative, different ways to do things, to get things done, and new services to offer, and that you know fundamentally is what drives us: is that desire to continue to be the backbone of that industry innovation. If you could sum up the in a bumper sticker, what that step function is? What is that new step function? Oh, when we say step functions of improvements, I mean we're always looking at targeting uh, you know over twenty percent performance improvement per generation, and then on top of that. Um, we've added uh, like a bunch of other capabilities beyond it. So it might not, um, it might show up as say a security um, feature as well. So you're getting the massive performance improvement gen to gen, and then you're also getting a new uh, capabilities like security features added on top. So you'll see more and more of those types of announcements from us as well, yeah. where we kind of highlight the, um, not just the performance, but the yes and what else comes with it so that you can continue to address, you know, again, those, um, the, the growing needs that are out there. So we're always trying to stay, stay a step ahead. All right, Lisa, Lisa Spellman, VP of the GM of the Xeon product family as well as marketing and data center. Thank you for spending the time and sharing your insights on Google Next and giving us a peek at the portfolio of the Xeon next generation. Really appreciate it. And again, yeah, keep on bringing that power to Moore's Law, more, more flexibility. Thank you so much for sharing. We wrap up more live coverage here in Palo Alto after this short break. <laughs> 